Good afternoon. It's a, a pleasure to be here. So uh, Sigalon is a, a new company. Um, we have been around about just about a year. So uh, it's the first um, foray here as Sigalon at the, the Mesa meeting, although myself and David Parrott, who's here from the company, both been at the Mesa meetings many times. So what, we're gonna, what I'll do is I'll walk you through what Sigalon is, what our technology is, some of the data we have, and where we're going so you can get the flavor and the story for the company. So in short, um, we feel that Sigalon is really harnessing the power of cell-driven therapeutics. And what that means is basically we feel we, we have the ability to create cell factories that can be implanted into the body and last for extended periods of time. And the reason we can do that is that uh, we have a proprietary technology that allows the um, biomaterial to be ignored by the immune system. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So our approach, as you can see in this um, diagram, is really to take cells, encapsulate them in a, in a, a hydrosphere, or hydrogel of sorts, and then this hydrogel is modified to uh, basically render it uh, uh, stealth or immune, uh, blind to the immune system, and we'll talk more about that. And the key for us is this durability and improving outcomes, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Sigalon was founded out of a technology that came out of, the, of MIT, out of uh, Bob Langer and uh, Dan Anderson's labs. Our, our board is a uh, you know, very impressive board. We feel we're very proud of the board of directors we have, including Bob Ruffalo um, and Steve Osterley. Our management team's got very experienced. We've all you know, been around cell therapies for, for a while and understand the space and are all very excited. And, and the technology is what really compelled us to join uh, Sigalon. So on the pipeline, where we're focusing today is across uh, three areas. First being diabetes. Uh, the other two areas are in the uh, enzyme replacement space and then finally in the uh, blood factor space. And our, our goal is to move into the clinic within two years and we're working hard to uh, achieve that goal. So biologics today, um, they've certainly transformed patient care. I mean, look back 20 years ago, the first antibodies were launched. Um, I, don't, I don't think people realized how transformative they would be and how, how you know, big of a uh, commercial opportunity it would be, and it's, it's been quite amazing. But they do have shortcomings. So you know, there's often frequent injections or infusions. There's a peak to trough issue, which uh, leads to an inconsistent PK pro profile, which often can actually lead to... Uh, um, lower efficacy or uh, different AEs that occur. Some proteins aren't viable as therapeutics, and uh, some of the new approaches, you know, there's some challenges with some of the new modalities coming out. So there's really an opportunity for a new, a next generation approach here. And that's where we feel like a Sigalon really fits in. And one of the challenges over the years, so people have tried to encapsulate cells and put them into the body to do things for, um, 30, 40 years. This paper is actually from 1980, um, before some people in the room were probably born. But so this paper is in, in science. They actually took islet cells. And what you want to do with islet cells in mice is you want the blood glucose levels to be around 100. That's normal glucose for a, for a mouse. And so they take the diabetic mice, and in this case, they did two things. They put naked cells into the mouse, and that's the uh, dotted line. And then they encapsulated cells in an alginate capsule and put those in the mouth. So two different arms. And you can see in the first arm, the naked cells, they actually worked for about four days and then the immune system cleared them, which, you know, now we see that with MSCs. We see that with anything where you, you deliver a naked cell to the body. The body clears it quickly without any sort of uh, immunosuppression. The second piece, um, and this has been the challenge with these encapsulation approaches, is you protect the body, uh, the cells, from that initial immune response. What you don't protect is the capsule from that fibrotic or foreign body response. And you can see here, in this case, fibrosis kick, kicks in at about two weeks, just after two weeks, and then you lose efficacy again. So that's the challenge in this space. You encapsulate, you protect one element, but you still have this fibrosis that occurs. And so the Siglon technology is a, is a proprietary polymer that allows you to encapsulate cells and effectively it's stealth from the immune system. The immune system can't see it. So it allows you to have long-term implants in the body. 
And it's interesting, if you look at the uh, diseases that people have tried for encapsulation, it's, it's really a, quite a laundry list. And this is just a list, some of them there you can see. And um, this has been ongoing over the last 30 years. Lots of people have tried different approaches, but have been unable to really find that uh, success because of this challenge of this foreign body response. So uh, Sigalon, um, our A-fibromer technology, um, is really this super uh, biocompatible material. And what this, this was dr driven out of uh, four nature publications um, that were published from the Langer and Anderson labs. And uh, it's, this was uh, done, led by a couple of postdocs, which is pretty impressive output for a, a postdoc to have four nature pubs. And from this, they were able to do a high throughput screening approach to identify small molecules that uh, prevent the fibrotic response. And so we have a library of these small molecules that we can apply to various devices or using these encapsulation uh, materials. So a couple of examples. So in this case, this is an experiment where polystyrene, so cells love polystyrene, they love to grow on it. So we took polystyrene beads and we implanted naked polystyrene beads into the peritoneal space of mice. And then we took polystyrene beads, coated them with our technology, and then implanted them in mice and waited two weeks in both instances. The left-hand side, you can see what happens to uh, typical polystyrene. This happens to pretty much any biomaterial you put into the body. You're going to get this fibrosis. Um, the body's trying to wall it off. It's pretty ugly looking. On the right-hand side, these are the beads that were in the mice uh, IP space for two weeks, but they're coated with our technology you can see effectively it's, it's, they look like they were just put in. And that's the beauty of what we're doing. That it allows, you know, you can keep things in the body for a long period of time and they're effectively ignored. One more example. So this is uh, looking at a peritoneal catheter. And this is actually a 12 week. So this is after 12 weeks of implantation in the mouse. So we take the peritoneal catheters, cut them down a little because they're a little too big for the mouse belly, and then put those into the uh, peritoneal space. And you can see on the control side, it's what you expect. Massive fibrosis, you can, um, it's difficult to actually see the uh, catheter in many of the cases. And these were all individual mice, so it's five control and then five um, mice with the afibromer technology. And you can see on this, the side where we've coated those with our technology, um, very little fibrosis occurred. The, the catheters are relatively clean, which is uh, amazing after a 12-week implantation. So there's a lot of places you could go with this type of technology. We could think about devices, coding devices, and different things put in the body, or you can think about therapeutics. And we're focusing on the therapeutic side. So what our platform is, the core part of the platform we've covered, which is this afibromer chemistry. The other part is uh, engineering a proprietary cell line that uh, produces high sustained levels of a therapeutic, uh, having cells that are long-lived, and then also building a plug-and-play capability into the cell line so that we can rapidly iterate and prototype um, opportunities um, for new therapeutics. And combining this proprietary cell line with the fiber chemistry gives us our final product, which, you know, I'll show you some of the data we've got in animals, but we feel like it, we're very confident that we should have durability of more than 12 months with a single dose. We will be able to redose. We can also stop therapy if we need to, um, all of which gives you a lot of flexibility over uh, some of the other long-acting modalities. So from data perspective, so we've um, done a non-human primate study, and uh, you know, in that we were able to demonstrate a couple of pieces. So one is that we had protection of the encapsulated cells, and we also had survival of these cells over an extended period of time, and this was without immunosuppression in these primates. We had a rodent study using uh, xenogeneic islets that were encapsulated. So these are islets, um, which is a very difficult experiment in many ways because you know, our bodies don't like things from other species put into them. In this case, we were able to have um, the mice were uh, functional in the sense of the, the capsules prevented the uh, diabetic response, if you will. So they had normal glucose levels for over a year um, because of the capsules being in the fiber technology. So that's quite unprecedented. The third example was, again, in a um, normal rodent. We're able to demonstrate a, a 
a different secreted protein, and we were able to get high levels of expression for greater than 20 weeks, and then we terminated the study. So, you know, thus far, you know, we've been able to demonstrate survival of the cells. We know that they're protected from the immune system, and, and the capsules are protected from the uh, fibrotic response. And then finally, we've been able to look with a blood factor and really demonstrate a dose-dependent expression. So this, this is important because now suddenly we've, we've got the ability to dose, but also be predictive in the way we dose, which is really an important part of uh, building a therapeutic. So with that data, you know, there's a lot of areas you can go. You think about every therapeutic protein or antibody or any sort of thing your cell can make, we could, you know, go after that. And, and uh, you know, determining where we focus and think is, is really a, it's a lot of fun, actually. So in the, in the blood factor space, you know, for example, there's lots of areas you could think about going after. A lot of diseases there where, you know, patients today are getting two to three infusions a week. But imagine if you switch from that to a single procedure, single implantation of these uh, capsules, and they're good for five years. You know, that would be a game change. In addition, you, do, you lose that peak trough uh, challenges that patients often have in this space. Again, reducing those microbleeds they get at the trough levels of the PK. Lysosomal storage disorder is another opportunity space. And then beyond that, you, know, you can begin to think of all sorts of areas you could go after. Um, adjacent indications, other modalities, so antibodies. There's, you know, cells love to produce, you can, it's a protein, you can produce antibodies, you could produce certain small molecules or even RNAs. So the opportunity from a platform perspective is very exciting to us. But for now, we are focusing in on the, uh, the uh, blood factor space and the uh, uh, lysosomal storage disorders as our sort of two key areas of, of focus for now, in addition to diabetes. So what we've, uh, what I've shown you is that we have, uh, have a technology that allows you to create cell factories that could be long lived in the body. And these cell factories are protected from the immune system. The cells can survive and thrive in these um, capsules for um, at least greater than one year in the rodent studies. And we've seen it for many, many months in the non-human primates. And uh, so it's exciting and uh, we hope it will work for many years in patients. So thank you. We have a couple minutes for questions. Yeah, so the cells are in a, in a hydrogel, in a, in a, a modified see. hydrogel, and uh, yeah, the out, the, you coat the outside of this sphere, this capsule, um, with the small molecule. I see. All right, thank you. And the capsules are about uh, one and a half uh, millimeters in diameter, so they're quite small. Any other questions? Very good, thank you.